we're sacked out and we go to bed. So the idea is we're in a low frequency mode where we're doing and stop doing the same things routine over and over again. So what I wanted to do by inviting Diana to talk with you guys today is to understand that she has the same 24 hours in a day <laughs> that we do. And how does she have the energy to do all of this? And even if you knew of maybe one thing that you can do, one small thing that you could to change your lifestyle, and I'm sure she's got tons of ideas for you, some small things you can do to kind of break out of that mold and that low frequency to move to a more high frequency. I want to inspire you guys, and that's why I chose Diana to come talk with us today. So Diana, the $64,000 question is on everyone's mind. Um, elite skyscraper athlete. Tell us how you got involved with that and give us a, like a window into that world. Sure. So I actually, well, what it is, is literally running in the stairwell of a skyscraper. So the shortest runs are usually about 40 floors, um, 40 50 floors and then they go up to the tallest run that I've done is the World Trade Center which is the tallest building on the Western Hemisphere at 104 floors. So it's a lonely sport. It's a oh short gosh. sport. It's, um, you know, there are about 10 to 20 uh, elite females in the world depending on which circuit you're talking about and we each run up ourselves um, at, as a time trial and so while the race may only actually take me like a 40-story building 45-story building would take me about six minutes maybe less um, but it is the most boring lonely <laughs> like solitude um, six minutes you'll ever imagine and then the longer ones are just like you know so 104 floors is like a sub 20 minute race for me and you kind of get delirious because a lot of these buildings are very high security and you're not allowed to bring any type of um, technology like you can't have your apple watch you can't have earphones in because it's such a high security building they're usually banks or something like that so you basically just go in with you know the clothes on your back and um, you have to literally motivate yourself through that anywhere from five to 20 minutes um, and it's it's the longest, shortest run, if, if you can imagine, you know, just something so short, but so grueling. Um, How did you get into that? With, like, who introduced you to such a thing? That sounds so cool. Yeah, I, I literally, I was at um, a fitness studio one day, and there was a charity hosting a run here in Philly. It was a new building, the Comcast Center that had just opened. And it was a run to the top. And I was like, well, that sounds more interesting than a 5K. Like, there's a 5K literally every weekend, right? But how often can you run up a building? That's probably not as often. So, so I signed up for it. And I happened to win it also, um, just completely out of the blue, um, in the female division. And um, so I thought, maybe I'm good at this. Maybe this is my sport. So that was, I think, when I was... 27 years old and um, ironically around that time is where like someone had mentioned to me that like a lot of male athletes they peak in their like late 20s mid 20s and I was like oh I should pick a sport what am I I'm training every day I work out an hour to two hours a day I train other people I train myself like I should actually pick a sport what am I doing this for and so I kind of had a few sports like mulling about in my head and then the stair climbing thing came up and then I was in China and I happened to see a billboard that was advertising another stair race. It was sold out, but I applied anyway. And then they got back to me and said I qualified for the elite division and there was one spot left. So from there, like I didn't even know it was something you could be elite at and now it's opened my eyes. There's actually um, three international stair running federations um, or circuits as we call them. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really great group of people and the ages really vary. It's anyone, the people that win actually, like I said, it's a very small group. So, um, the woman that holds the record, um, for the most 
uh, wins at stair races is I think 54 years old, which to me was such a, it was so inspirational to know that I had so much further to go and that I was actually not as good as I thought at something. So on the one hand, you know, it sucks to lose, but at the, at the same time, and I, as I'm in the stairwell, in, in, it was in Shanghai at the time, and I realized there's no possible way I can win. Like, even if I triple stepped and ran, and, and like, there's no way I'm losing this race to a 54 year old woman. And I'm 29. So, and at the time I was 28, I think. So it was like, wow, this is so cool. I have so much longer to go. I'm not like, I don't have to retire athlete at the age of like 30, like basketball players and, you know, all the Olympians do. Yeah. That's so great. that kind of, yeah, that's like a lifelong thing. So that's what got me into it. Cool. So what I want to know too is you've got all these different activities that we're seeing, you know, and you're a fitness instructor at Lifetime. Uh, you take care of other people and their fitness and training them. You're obviously training for your own activities as well. You have your uh, mostly, you know, this very fast, high anaerobic sport that you're doing, even though it's lasting for six minutes. It's a, you know, your mixture of endurance with a lot of anaerobic mixed in there as well with that sprint up those stairs. How are you fueling for all your different activities? What is, what is the, the difference in the way that you're fueling for those? So I, in general, like I'm one of those people that will try anything. So I've tried every diet out there. And what I found for me personally is what you learn like in grade school, a quote unquote balanced diet. Um, and to me, I take that very literally balanced as in literally equal, equal carb, equal protein, equal fat. And when I'm in my prime, I find that staying close to that perfect triangle ratio um, does really well for me um, because I also do like fitness modeling and like there's times you have to cut down and then there's like sports season where you have to have a lot of power. Um, there are times when I'll bring my protein up to 50% and there are times that I'll bring my carbs up to 50 or more percent. But like on the regular day to day, like what I would consider myself like happy and performing at a high mental level, um, a high physical level also is that nice balanced 30, 30, 30 kind of ratio. And I mean, we're talking about you can so. typically tell other people that you're training other people that you're training. Do you typically tell them to kind of follow the same thing and then kind of that balance 30, 30, 30 with a little wiggle room. And then also where does you can fit in along with that? And we'll talk a little bit about the science of you can in a moment, but I'm, I'm curious to when for what activities you're using you can and you find it helpful. Sure. So when I first started, um, so to answer your first question, I, you know, we get asked every single day, what do you eat? What do you train? How, what's your favorite workout? What's the best workout? How do I get abs? Like, you know, what's the best food? What's the best protein powder? So the questions are endless. I do, um, I do tell people it's, I think it's easy to start with a nice balance ratio because then you can wiggle from there and then see what works for you. So that is my personal recommendation to people um, at a very like high level. But then in terms of the you can, um, because I am going sometimes from 4 a.m. until 9 p.m., which is a long day, and sometimes that includes four workouts, um, you know, so. I do find that the slower burning carbs is what's important. So prior to finding you can, it was things like, you know, your, your typical bodybuilder stuff, like your white rice, your sweet potato and your oatmeal, you know, like that's, that's pretty much yeah. what was available to you as a slow burning carb. That was it. Those are your three options basically. And so that's what had kind of been keeping me going for years. And then the, so I started with Lifetime about six months ago. And upon joining, that's when I was trying out all their products and I got introduced to UCAN for the first time. With, at the beginning, I was taking it um, 
just as the pre-workout because you know it says it on the bottle it's a pre-workout so I was like okay um you know right it has so much more but like you know I'm just looking for like the buzzword so I'm like okay pre-workout that's what they told us at the gym so I'm taking it before my workouts which was great um getting through the workouts really high energy um one thing that I I, I think the testament to you can is at a 5 30 a.m class when people at the end of class instead of coming up to you and saying like oh great class what they really want to know is what are you on <laughs> so, <laughs> they're like are you like they're like you like you have to be on something and it's it has it's the you can that's what it is i mean you can the way i like to explain it to people is you can take all the pre-workout supplements like the beta alanines the the vasodilators, um, all of that kind of stuff. But if you aren't actually giving yourself fuel, like the building block, the basis of the pyramid, all the extra stuff is, it's kind of just going into thin air, honestly. Um, kind of my analogy that I give people is with a car, you can like you can wax your car, you can be driving a Lamborghini, you can like have the seats detailed and, and hand wax but if there's not actually gas in the car then what good was all of the extra stuff it was just kind of a waste right there so that's my opinion with that you. is a really great analogy I love that analogy it's really good and it hits home to people what about using you can throughout the day because I I know that you had mentioned too that you use it throughout the day as well and you have some recipes that you're gonna share with us too and then I'll get into a little bit of the sciencey part of you can sure so okay this was I want to say three months two three months ago um, I actually this happened by accident I happened to have been hooked up with a bunch of free you can because the reps were by we hit it off like I was being extra friendly and I got left with a bunch of samples so I'm not gonna lie so I had all these extra symbols and part of me was going to hand them out in class, but then the other part of me was like, let me just use these. So I happened to have had so much you can on hand. And so I just happened to be taking it. I went from taking the one serving a day before a workout to taking it for breakfast as a pre-workout. And then just whenever I felt like it as a snack or after dinner or whenever. So with I went from I went from one serving to three servings like zero to sixty just one day started taking three servings and I've been taking three servings every day. <laughs> I love it. Now the amazing thing is that I one of the classes I teach is cycle. Um, one of those formats allows you to measure your progress using a um, using a, a console which measures your watts, your power, your RPM, your distance, all of those metrics that measure how strong you are and your performance. And my max watts, everyone's is individual, but for me, I'm looking at about 550. Like if I can hit 550, I'm feeling like I'm having a great ride. Um, so, and that had been my max for like a couple years now. And literally the day I took three servings of you can the day my max watts went up to 1150 so literally double. it was it, in fact it was so insane that when I looked down at my meter I thought my bike was broken I didn't even take a second look at it I assumed the bike was broken I logged it as a you know needs repair in the book and I moved on with my day Literally two days later, I taught at a separate studio, separate bike, separate power meter, same thing. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It, it can't be wrong. I, I'm on a different bike, different studio, doubled my max watts. So I took a picture of it. I literally, in the middle of class, grabbed my camera or my phone and snapped a picture of the console. And then same thing, like my third ride, I was, again, teaching, so I wasn't exerting myself as much, but it was 800 something. I mean, to literally double your watts. And the only thing that was different was the UCAN. This was a week where I had just gotten back from China. Um, so I was jet lagged severely. I was sick. I 
had everything working against me. Um, the only thing different was the UCAN. And so since then, it's been like, and it's so easy. It's such an easy thing to consume, especially when you're busy, when you're going, you know, drop parents drop off, then you got to go teach, then you have to do your grocery shopping, then you have to pick up one kid and drop the kid off here. When you have all of those moving parts throughout your day, um, it is such an easy thing to actually consume um, on the go that it has just become my go-to. I actually have, I should open up like a shop in my cabinet because now I have one whole shelf while I have all the, all the flavors just like perfectly lined up there. I need to take a picture of that for you. But it's, it's just such an easy fuel source and obviously has benefits just because numbers don't lie. And, um, and you know, my kids, my kids and my husband take it also and have great things to say about them. But, um, you know, that's, I that's, definitely want to talk about that in a moment. Like what, like how you're using it with your kids. My kids use it too. I love what you had to say about, you know, kind of when you're running around too, not just because it gives you that energy to do so, but it's kind of like when you take it, and I've taken it myself for six years, when you've taken it, you feel like I don't have to worry. Like I don't have to worry about being hungry in the next hour because I know I had the UCAN on board. And that's such a powerful feeling, especially if you've got, and you do have little kids and you're like, oh, I know I need this energy for the next two hours. So I want to jump really quick into the science of you, you can and share that with people that are watching because you might not be familiar with you can out there. And I just get, honestly, Diana, so many questions about, well, what, what is it? Because I'm new to you can. It sounds awesome. She's getting all this energy. She's running up tall buildings. She's taking care of kids. And how she, She's doing this on this fantastic level of energy. So what is UCAN? So UCAN uh, basically is anybody that's looking for steady energy. It is one of, in my opinion, the absolute best carbohydrate source in the world because it doesn't spike your blood sugar and you also don't crash. So I show this graph over and over on a daily basis because it just makes sense when you look at it. And this is... You know, the red line is you can. We're almost flatlining your glucose response and your insulin response. Because when you eat something, so that blue line is, you know, it could be a banana, it could be a typical bar that you might grab at the store before you go in for a workout or before you pick up the kids. And it has, you know, maybe 20, around 20 grams of carbs or something. And you feel awesome for about 30 minutes or so. But then you're crashing, and unfortunately, and you get this a lot because you see it in your studio, too. These are people who, you know, they're crashing in the middle of the workouts with you, and you're seeing them crash, and they could have made a better choice that lasts them longer. So a scoop of you can will last for, it depends on the person, and it depends how rigorous the activity is. If it's a one hour like cycle spin class, what happens is, or, or even a strength workout or a group fitness class, what you're going to notice is you feel better even the second half of your workout. The numbers that Diana mentioned also with her workouts, that's great. And you might be in fitness class and might not be able to uh, measure that, but you'll know that second half of the workout that you're feeling amazing because that line graph that you're looking at right in front of you shows that you're blood sugar isn't bottoming out, that you're pretty much, you know, staying stable and able to power through the rest of that workout instead of hitting that horrible wall, you know, where everybody's like looking at the clock, like, oh, how much time do I have left? Oh, 20 minutes, oh, 15 minutes. And now you're in a position where you're like, oh my gosh, it's almost time for class to be over. I didn't even notice it. Or it's even time for my strength workout to be over. I didn't actually even notice that. I could keep going, which is a crazy, feeling. So that's what you can does for you. It's made from an non-GMO cornstarch. Uh, it took about eight years to formulate. And this is just something that, you know, it's less processed than oatmeal. So for people out there that really are concerned with, well, I kind of, you know, like to gravitate towards whole foods. 
UCAN is about as all natural as you can get and in the powders there's absolutely no sugar added. It is a great pre-workout choice and just to grab for steady energy throughout the day. So hopefully that kind of sums up the little bit about the science of UCAN. I will tell you that it was formulated originally for an infant. So when Diana mentions, hey, I use it with my kids and I use it with my kids, it's really important to know that originally it was formulated for someone that has uh, something called glycogen storage disease. So when he takes in carbs, he can't utilize them the way that everybody else does. And so the co-founder of the company, uh, actually this was his son that was born with this disease, and it allowed um, Jonah is his name to be able to subsist and last off of these long chain carbs for much longer and at least just sleep through um, throughout the night and in saying so because it's all natural this is how we know that it can also be used for kids as well so Diana in saying that I want to know uh, how your kids like you can which kind of you can they like because we have um, as you know, both the packets and the bars. Um, my kids love both. I can't wait to hear what your kids love. And then and let's jump to some recipe because those are super fun too. So tell me about your kids and how they use you again. Sure. So my kids, um, well, I'm Korean half. So like they're going to eat anything no matter what because I'm going to threaten them if they don't. But what I will say is that with uh, like lately particularly um my son is seven and going through that literally just burning through food i mean it, it, it evaporates as soon as it hits him it evaporates he is hungry all i mean we will have just eaten dinner and half an hour later he's like what's for dinner so and that just i mean as a parent it drives you crazy it's like the kid you put to bed and then like they're up again and then they're up again it's like i can't keep cooking you more and more food so for my kids lately um they've gotten a taste for hot chocolate so and it's like soda you can't say no right like once they get a taste of it like they know what it is they're never going to forget what it is and so with you can the great thing is that you can provide that to them like you i literally have just been taking a scoop of the chocolate you can um, some hot water, I blend it slowly, not too fast. I'll just do like a slow blend in the blender and it makes a, a perfect hot chocolate. It's not too sweet to where like they're, you know, they get that really sweet taste, but it's like, they said it actually tastes like warm chocolate pudding, which is, which is great. So they've been using it that way. Another thing I'll do with, um, my kids is um, I'll make like a nice cream for them instead of actually having ice cream in the house. I'll take like frozen blueberries and then the you can and I'll use cinnamon, chocolate, um, whatever they're feeling. My son likes the raspberry flavors, but um, I'll just take the frozen berries and then like a small amount of almond milk or coconut milk and then just use my high speed blender and then it makes it into like an ice cream frozen yogurt kind of thing. So that's another good one because that's something where it's like right before bed they want nice. it, right? It's like dessert. And so why not be able to give them something where they're going to sleep well and then also wake up and not be like super, super hungry either. So those are my favorite ways for my kids to use them. That, those are probably the easiest ways um, that I found. And it's, it's good. And they enjoy making smoothies too. You know, whenever you get kids involved yeah. in making, it, it, touching buttons and flipping switches, like – kids love. So for me and my kids, it's always been a bonding thing to make smoothies and what I call nice cream together. Um, so that's, that's something that's been really easy. Well, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that too. And I don't know, two things. I don't know if you've ever with your, you can kind of hot chocolate with the cocoa, if you've ever used like, um, an unsweetened vanilla almond milk in place of the water just to kind of give it that smooth creamy feeling as well and then totally anecdotally we don't really have any studies on this but it makes sense that if your blood sugar is dropping during the night that you can wake up or have restless sleep and sometimes people don't even know they're having restless sleep they just wake up tired so I can't tell you the dozens and dozens of people that have come to me over 
you know, the years that have told me, I actually do a scoop of Ucan before I go to bed at night, and it just helps me to sleep better. And it makes sense. Like I said, we don't have studies on it, but it makes sense that it would help them to sleep better. So you're actually doing something really good for those kids <laughs> by giving right. them something at night to help them sleep, and they don't even know it. <laughs> And actually, I mean, it, it, it goes the same with the protein. I mean, I know we're not talking about protein, but a lot of um, competitors will take um, like a slower absorbing protein at night. So like an egg white or um, uh, casein protein because they're slower absorbing and like it helps them overnight. Um, so I could totally see where you can could, could fit into that for like a, a really rigorous strength training. My daughter yeah, just and I'm going to tag right? on exactly to what you said. Oh, I know. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to tag on to what you said just because it's they here to help people too. There's tons of studies out now that do show, especially as we age, because none of us are getting any younger, and especially if you're like 50 years old and up, which a lot of our clients are, and maybe some people are watching that are either in that age group or have parents or friends that are. Uh, a protein at night absolutely does help to preserve your muscle mass so that it's not wasting over time as we age. We do have UCAN products that have protein in them as well. And so that would be an excellent choice or even just frankly mixing the UCAN that you love with your favorite protein powder as well. Well, we're talking about around 180 calories. You can use it in place of a dessert and have something about an hour before you go to bed and then just know that you're doing something healthy for your body. So I'm glad you mentioned it, you know, even off the topic of strictly you can, but the importance of protein, which is one of the reasons that we uh, have products with you can that do contain some protein and those you know you can order off of our website as well let's look at some of these um, recipes here some of these are really great you do a Cosmo teeny I love it the cran raspberry you can <laughs> with the pre-workout walk us through real quick some these two recipes and tell us a little bit about them and how you play with them and what they do for you sure so I I personally love to um, come up with recipes that mimic adult beverages just because I think it makes it I deal with so many people that in my um, demographic at the place where I work where they are kind of scared of the thought of um, taking supplements and they view anything that comes in powder form as a supplement so any way I can make it sound cutesy or more um, digestible to the everyday woman um, helps so I will usually come up with names for things that mimic like a Cosmo or a Mojito or something like that. So for the Cosmo one, it's just your Cran Raz you can, and then the, um, the pre-workout and the BCAAs that I take are also those fruit fruity type of flavors. So that's just a really simple one. It needs to be simple because it's right before your workout where you, the last thing you want to be doing is complicating things. So it's very simple. It's something that I'll take um, literally en route to the gym, maybe 30 minutes before, 45 minutes before. And it can be done in a shaker bottle also, which is very convenient. Um, yeah. And then the Mayan cocoa, I just love spicy chocolate. Like, doesn't everyone just love spicy chocolate? <laughs> um, so yeah, that... if you guys haven't tried spicy chocolate, you need to try the spicy chocolate. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's just so good. And, um, like, yeah, so the, the cocoa or the cinnamon, I think it's, yeah, so Mexican hot chocolate is, I think, what they usually call it. But it's got a kick of the cinnamon, some cayenne pepper, some ginger, um, you can throw in some mint in there if you want to. The sea salt that you'll notice in there, I actually always include because salt brings out the cocoa flavor in a chocolate. So if you put salt with any type of chocolate item, it brings out the chocolate. So since we're adding cocoa nibs in there, just because I really like that rich, dark chocolate taste, the sea salt adds to that. So Obviously, none of that is necessary. At the end of the day, you can just take the big items, like just the cinnamon you can and just the um, chocolate protein, and that would be fine. But 
why not add some extra some extra kick. So that's what all the rest of that is. And this one, if you'll notice, it doesn't include a fat in it. It's just your carbs and your proteins. So this is one that I would usually take right after a workout just to make sure that the protein like hits my muscles pretty quickly um, and it's quick to absorb. And I'm probably gonna be eating in an hour or two anyway. So that one is um, simple, just the carb and the protein for a post-workout. Well, and I love what you had to say, too, about, you know, it, even when you're first starting, it might be something where you're just having you can, you know, you might have a scoop of it before you work out in water, make it easy peasy. But as you get to start playing with it, you do, you start to think like, what else could I possibly do with this that would be cool? So I'm going to actually share with you a recipe that I've been sharing for the last couple of days now that we're in the holiday season. It is not not on these slides, so you'll want to grab a pen and a piece of paper. We're actually going to be sending out the link to this uh, webinar uh, shortly after the webinar. So all of you that have registered for the webinar, you'll be getting a downloadable link that you can listen to this again. But here's my recipe, my holiday recipe, to, and you'll love this, Diana, because it is a mock eggnog. So what I do is I take a cinnamon delight powdered you can so it you know you can get it in the packet or the tub and it's one scoop of your cinnamon delight powdered you can and one scoop of your favorite vanilla protein powder can be plant-based or whey either one and a about eight ounces or so of an unsweetened vanilla almond milk Normally, I like to mix a little almond milk and water, but not for this one. I want it nice and smooth and creamy. So it has that nice, very subtle spice to it from the cinnamon you can. And if you happen to be on a ketogenic diet or a super low carb diet, you can also add two tablespoons of heavy cream to it as well. And it makes it super smooth and rich and creamy. And I've been telling people uh, out here in the Bay Area where I'm visiting, I've been telling people, listen, do this something like this, even if it's just a plain you can. We're in the holiday season here. We're trying to fuel, not just for our activities, but for these dang of parties where there's cookies everywhere. And go ahead and do the you can, either this kind of recipe or just a scoop of you can and water. It doesn't matter. You don't have to make it difficult. Um, and do that 30 minutes before you head out to your party. You can use uh, you know, some of these recipes like Diana posted here, the Mayan cacao, and something like that that keeps you interested and you know, again, it's that mental edge that you have that when you leave for that party, you're good to go. Because your blood sugars are stable, now you're not going to have any cravings like you would normally want to dive headfirst into that cookie tray. Now you're not going to feel that way. So we make smarter choices. Definitely still indulge a tiny bit. Have fun. It's the holidays, but we don't ever want to have, you know, regrets afterwards that we ate too many cookies or too much sugar or the sugar hangover. So those are just some tips to um, probably post that on the You Can Instagram this week to uh, share with everybody that recipe as well. So I want to I wanna wrap this up, Diana, because I know that we probably have some questions from people. If you have questions out there, you can type them in now, and we can do our best to answer your questions. And then the other thing that I want to know kind of to close things out is what are some things that you guys do in your household besides the you can that are just healthy food items that you guys keep around at all times and are kind of go to things in your diet for you and your kids sure so the biggest thing for us is really simple and it's water so i don't allow and this you know i, I hate to say i don't allow but i don't there's in, when you're in the house, water is the only option um, as, as in terms of just like daily drinking. Obviously, we have almond milk and things for smoothies and cereal and things like that. But for the most part, um, there's, you're never going to find a juice or a soda um, in the Ellis household. Um, and that has been something that was actually really easy um, to start with. And the kids, they know that they each have their own liter water bottle and that's their water bottle. Zeta's is pink, Zeta's is blue, my husband's is black, mine is yellow. 
And that's your bottle. You make sure that you're done with it once or obviously my husband twice by the end of the day. And that's been really important. Um, the other thing that I keep in my fridge, and actually I should post this up on my Insta story later, but um, I have one of those fridges where you can have like the doors open up where you can have lower shelves for kids, like the reach-in shelves. So those I keep the individual hummus packs, individual guacamole packs, um, the I'll, I'll pre-bag like carrots and um, celery. I pre-bag all of those so they're the grab and go for the kids. Um, and that takes me no time to drop the packets in there. It takes about three minutes to cut up the veggies for the week and bag them into individual bags. But that's something that I know the kids aren't going to go looking all over the house for candy. They're just going to go straight for the hummus or the, the um, guacamole. So that's probably been one of the biggest um, things, especially since both of my children became of school age and could, you know, look into the fridge and start to kind of um, fend for themselves when it came to like after school snacks and things like that. Just having things accessible. Accessibility is um, a big deal for me. Like having a very organized fridge is paramount. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Especially when you've got kids, you want them reaching for healthy things too. And it's good for people out there to know, both moms and dads, when we're talking about, you know, how busy you are and, you know, your crazy schedule and they're thinking about their crazy schedule and they're thinking, wow, and she's able to do this as well. Just take a few minutes and to be able to put things, like you said, even just to have things cut up, to have things in available is great. I want to close out here um, and just if you again if you have any questions uh, feel free to type your questions in and we'll get to your questions here. If there aren't any questions um, then I will close things out. What I'm looking for too is just to leave you with a, another little nugget out there and that's a question I just get asked all the time just in case it's on your mind because people ask me all the time how often should I do you can how many times a day is it just for workouts I think Diana did a great job of letting you guys know she's using it at different times of the day too I love when you totally by chance got a whole bunch of you can and used it three times a day because you really saw the benefit of that which is awesome I've used it many times too just to help to get me by to steady my blood sugar as well and so many clients have done the same do you have to use it three times a day no absolutely not but I will tell you this out there if you're using it consistently this is where we see the best results so it's not something where you would say oh well I use it once a week for my toughest this workout you'd want to use it consistency consistently even on the days that you're not working out and that's where Diana had pointed out some of those uh, ways that you could use it just you know j to get a little extra edge in the afternoon before picking up the kids for example or that pain point of your day when you're you know that you're going to be the hungriest have a scoop of you can or you can bar um, but what I noticed with this from the nutrition perspective is then you're body gets used to processing you can and those of us even he, that work at you can that have used it for years it will last longer the effects last longer again for us that's anecdotal you can a scoop of you can for me can last about five hours because my body's so used to receiving it so I you know you don't have to use it three times a day um, but it's great if you're consistent with it and you use it at least once a day. Um, so hopefully that helps for people out there that are wondering when to use it. Do you have to use it for a workout that lasts three and a half hours like our graph showed you? No, absolutely not. Um, what it does with a shorter workout is then you know that you're having a better second half of your workout through and you're not hungry and wanting to eat your arm off <laughs> at the end of the um, workout. So Diana, what I'd love for you to do as we close up is to go through your social media with us. How do people find Mrs. Diana Ellis online? Sure. So um, my primary social media outlet is Instagram and it's um, Mrs. like I'm married, Diana like the princess, Ellis like the island. 
so at Mrs. Diana Ellis, <laughs> and um, I mostly post on the stories, so the 24-hour snaps at the top, um, and that's where you'll find like little nuggets. Like this week, I have been experimenting with trying to find like the perfect Belgian waffle recipe. So all of my mistakes and um, successes you will see on the Insta story. Um, so all of that kind of good stuff. And um, just to piggyback on what you said, Karen, about when to take it, one other issue that I notice comes up a lot is just people getting stressed out about what to take and when and how much and what if it's a day that I, um, what if I didn't sleep this much today and what if I ate this much at breakfast but my workout I did decided to do it. Like I mean all these what ifs and caveats and um, there's a bigger picture if you're going to just move your body, fuel your body, don't get hung up on all these little catch-22s or if you just won't go anywhere. So move your body, fuel it properly, and just, you know, it's a journey. So don't get hung up on all of these little tiny minutia. That's well, nice. and I love that you mentioned that too, because yes, because that's a matter of too, that inspirational nugget that you have to give. And we do that as a lot, a lot as women, like all these questions like no just get started so in saying that I did promise that you would maybe give us a little inspiration for the people out there that are maybe living that kind of low frequency lifestyle where they're just doing the same thing day in and day out and you've seen them and you will definitely see them at lifetime in the new year where they're starting something new maybe a new workout or something what do you have to say to those people that you know are really struggling but they're trying and maybe you know an extra workout a week or trying to fit it in and you're a busy mom and you know what it's like what are some words of inspiration just to leave us with talk to yourself I mean literally when you wake up in the mirror or when you're when you open your eyes first thing in the morning like say something either in your head, maybe it starts in your head, or say it out loud. Like, there are some mornings where I don't want to get out of bed, and I literally say, Diana, get up, go, slay your day. And then I, I pop out of bed, and I, like, there's just something about talking and hearing it out loud, and it puts some, a certain pep in your step, and it almost makes it real. So there's nothing crazy about talking to yourself. I do it all day long. My kids, they're like, who are you talking to, mom? I'm constantly like saying just small affirmations like, you got this, like, you know, pat on the back, little affirmations like that all day long. Like I literally have full on conversations with myself, like just trying to hype up for the next, um, you know, the next obstacle that life throws your way. It might be tomorrow, it might be a year from now, or it might be five minutes from now, you know, in the back seat with the kids. So just, no, just hold on, Zeta. Uh, so that's the main thing. And every success starts with the decision to, to start or to try. So if you don't move, you're not going to go anywhere. So that's all. If you don't move, you're not going to go anywhere. So Say what you have to every morning well, to get yourself out and keep going. Yes, absolutely. I love it. And I love those little nuggets of advice. They're so huge. I love that you talk to yourself. I thought I was crazy, but you definitely hit the nail on the head there. You know, and some people pick an animal, like just to say, okay, well, this is, I'm a lion today or I'm a cheetah today and I'm gonna you know like you said slay the day I love it that's super helpful for everybody we know you have mom duties still to go and we see your little ones there so I'm gonna let you go Diana it was an absolute pleasure I know that you helped a bunch of people today even just to give them some advice and and inspiration and I just absolutely love it y'all go check out Diana at mrs. Diana Ellis on Instagram for sure and uh, we will be uh, sending out this video shortly and a link so that you can download and watch Diana thank you a ton you have a great great evening all, all of you guys bye